Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. I, I, I shouldn't say I'm surprised, but I am surprised with how things are going with the youth service right now. I, I'm really blessed already, actually, with, with what's going on. I mean, kids singing, testimonies, and just... And I want to thank all the parents. You know, Amen. your parents, without... We, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. Give, You know, without you, these children are not going to be able to come up here because of your influence on your children. It's just amazing. So I really wanted to thank you and how you work with your children and everything. And um, um, I'm going to, and I understand we have children here. We don't have no class over there. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try as much as I can to bring this message. I cut down a lot of the things uh, that I'm supposed to be doing here. Um, but um, I, I do want to mention this month is an August theme month for, for the youth and the family challenges yeah. in Christian challenges, you know. Um, the theme of the month is it's found in Romans 12, 13. And, and it says, For I say, though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Wow. Yes, sir. It's just a lot, of, it's a lot in there. Can't think highly. But the theme of the week is found in Ephesians chapter 2, I mean chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. And it's also one in 1 Timothy chapter uh, 5, verse 4. But uh, here's uh, uh, Ephesians 6, 2, 3. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on earth. And in 1 Timothy 5, 4, it says, But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to require their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. I, um, I asked Nia to uh, pray for opening prayer for our sermon this morning. Come on, Nia. Thank you. Nice and loud. Tell everybody who you are and just go on in prayer. My name is Nia, and today is a wonderful day for me to, pr to pray today for the sermon. And I'm going to be doing really well because I'll always be praying this year when I go to church. and. I love Jesus, and everyone does, and I love everybody here, and I bless everyone here, and I'm always going to be praying for people. If they're hurt or something, I'm going to be nice to everyone at my school. I'm going to be nice to my um, brother, everyone here, and I would like to pray today. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day today. Please bless the sermon that he will do good today and bless everyone today when we're going back home and stuff and when I'm praying every day at home, in my room, everywhere when I pray. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've, I've got to tell you, you don't see what the, what the youth and the children did today. You don't see that anywhere else. Not often you would see something like that. Yeah. That, that, is, that is a blessing. If we, if we as a church present something like that if before God, that is a, such a blessing. That is a, such a blessing. But I, you know, I, I understand uh, we have the children. And, and I have some projects. I have some projects, well, a little fun projects for the teens work with me, and 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 the children, Sunday school class. Okay, I have the um, and here's the instruction real quick, because you are all gonna be a part of my second part of the message. Okay, so here's the here's the thing, what I want you to do, uh, the usher is gonna be passing out this a uh, uh, paper and and a pencil. What I want you to do is here's the thing. 
think of something, draw something, or write something that what would God create it? What would, you, what, would God, what would you want God to create you if he didn't create who you are? Did everybody get that? If God didn't create who you are, what would you want God to create you? Okay? And if you could just, if you, if you, if you want to draw, go ahead and pass it up, please. If, if you draw, or raise your hand, raise your hand so that the usher can see you. And raise your hand, please, so that they can give you your paper. All right? And so just, if you can draw something like that okay and then just tell a reason why you chose that okay and and uh at the end of the sermon i mean at the uh, when the second part of the service i'm gonna call you all up front here and you're gonna show everybody we're just gonna have a little fun that's all it's like sunday so we're gonna show everybody what you draw or what you wrote down all right just work with me any parents if you could just assist them if they need help i appreciate it all right Thank you. I right. just give a little time, then we'll start with the message. All right, here you go. Here you go. Um, I'm gonna. I know I asked the children. I, I know I asked the children to do something, but I'm gonna ask them a question because they're they're the brain in our Sunday school over there. They're, they got they they're the brain. Now. Aside, I'm going to ask, aside from God, aside from God, what do you think is the most powerful thing on this world? I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask my uh, Sunday school class over here, uh, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you have any idea? What do you think? What do you think, aside from God, what do you think is the most powerful thing in this world? Anything? You, you, got, you got something over there? I, I want my, my kids. There you go. What, what is it? Come here, come here. I'm going to come over here and just let me, let me, hang on. What is, what is it? Just, just. Uh. The strongest thing in this world beside God is Jesus. Yes, you're right. And aside from him, what do you think else is, is the, you know, the most powerful thing? Uh, All right, I'll get, I'll get back uh, to you. Worship. Go ahead. Worship? Thank you. That's good. That's good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Ah, oh, okay, okay. Nia, Nia, Nia. Nia and Brooklyn. Just give me a... Okay, go ahead. Love. Love. All right. Brooklyn? Peace. Peace. Oh, my goodness. We're getting, some, we're getting somewhere here. All right. Thank you. Um, th oh, I'm sorry. I forgot my buddy Chris over here. He's got his hands raised. Go ahead. Which one is it? Flower. It is made of flower. Flowers. Flowers. Wow. Wow, those are, go those are all good answers. Oh, so, oh, I got another one. What, what is it? What is it? Kindness. Kindness. Wow. Hey, Chris is over here. Man, I got, I, got a, I, I got a lot of questions. I've got a lot of answers over here. Go ahead, Chris. Peace. Peace. Oh, there you go. Joel, what is it? Um, happy. Happy. All right. Joy. Joy. Oh, my goodness. I, I hope you're getting all this answer. I hope you're getting all this answer from our children today. Those are the bright, those are the bright, bright in our class. I'm going to tell you. Do you see how much fun we're getting over there right now? I'm, I'm catching my breath real quick. Um, um, all right, here, here's the thing. One of the most powerful things aside from God in this world, and those are all good answers. One of the things, the most powerful thing in this world is the human free will. Amen. That is the most, aside from God, that is the most powerful thing in this world. Okay? I say that because even God cannot touch the human free will. He can if he wants to, but he won't because he said so. All right? So, hey, y'all. Uh, Children, pay attention real quick. I'm going to come back with you. So remember that. Remember that the most powerful thing aside from God is human free will. I'm going to come back with you guys later on. I want you to shout out that answer again because I'm going to ask you again. All right. Okay. Here we go. So uh, human free will. The part one of the message this morning is, is a high value Part one is high value of parental respect. Parental respect. And 
And yes, God, God can control human, human, but he won't because he's God, and that's something that he gave you as a gift, okay? And, uh, and, and just, just to um, give a little explanation to the children what that human free will is, and I know adults, you know all of that. Human free will is that God is giving you an ability to choose whatever you want. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example, children. If, if, if the baby wants something and, and he doesn't get it or she doesn't get it, you know what to do? Cry. Because he, he, he can do that. He, he, that's what he wants to do. Until the baby is not going to stop crying until you give him what he or she wants. Am I right? Yes, that is. And, and, and the kid, if, if, you're, if your child... You bought, if your mom and dad bought someone else's uh, or, or, or your brother or sister bought a gift and you didn't get one, you have the will to choose whether you're going to pout in there or you're going to cry or you're going to be happy for your brothers or sister. You have that choice. So that's the free will. Okay, everybody understand that? All right, good. So now, um, when, when, when I say... When I say um, God is not going to um, touch that free will, it, it doesn't really mean God doesn't care about us. Okay? It doesn't really mean God, oh, don't worry about him. I, you know, I, you know, God is not saying that. I, I want you to know that all of you, all, every one of us matters to God. Everybody. Not not one single of you is going to be left out. Everybody matters to God. And you know what else? You know what else? You, you, do, you know, do you know, kids, everybody, you know that you cannot disappoint God? Yes. You cannot disappoint God. And I'm going to show you the scriptures that proves that. Okay? Here we go. In Psalm 103, verse 14. What it says here, Psalm 103, verse 14, and it says, For he knoweth our frame, and he remembereth that we are dust. The word knoweth in, in Hebrew, the word knoweth in Hebrew is called yada. It's Y-A-D-A, -A, yada. And in Hebrew it says to know, that is to know. And this word it's particularly represent a relationship between man and God. And it speaks of a deep intimacy that the father longs to have his children. That's, that's what that word represents, yada, okay? And God knows you inside and out. God knows you without respect to time and, or action. He does. And, and nothing has caused God to know you. He just knows you. And, and that's, that's what the, the, word, the word frame, the word frame in, in Hebrew is called yetzer. It's Y-E-T-S-E-R -E -E in Hebrew, yetzer. And, and, it's, and it's translated a form, okay, a form. And it says, to fashion in the mind before forming something in time and place. That's what that means. So you, they're brewing something in their mind. And this is the term that it's often used to describe the work of a potter. And it's a word for an artist. Frame, yes sir, okay? And that's why God says in the next verse, when he says, for he knoweth our frame, and he says, he remember that we are the dust. Because that's what God forms you and me. The dust of the Amen. earth. And he made us who we are today. And that's why, and that's why you cannot surprise God with anything that you pulled out from your whatever. You know, he cannot, good or bad, good or bad, God, you cannot surprise. You know, uh, even, even though, even though that you are 
are, are, are thinking about something to do that is out of the will of God. You, you, you can't surprise God with that. And he, he's not playing around. He's not playing peekaboo. And he's like, oh, I, I, I can't look at it. He's going to do it. He's going to, yeah, oh, oh, he did it. He did. He, the guy's not doing like that. He's, he's not, you know, he, he just knows. He just, you know, when it rains, when it rains, he just drop all of these guys. Well, oh, I didn't make a rain today. Why did it rain? You know, he knows. You know, when, when the flowers, when the flowers die, God knows the flowers die. He's not, he doesn't surprise by that. Okay, so to put it into context, to put it into context, let's read uh, verse 13, the verse before that. And it says, like as the father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Isn't that, isn't that powerful? A Lord pity at them that fear him. So is that means, is that, so if you, don't, if you don't fear God, if you just do whatever you want, I don't care about God, then there's no pity in there. It just, it just says right there, like as a father pity at his children, so the Lord pity at them that fear him. Okay? So if you have respect for God today, if you have respect for God today, here's what God is asking us today. And he's saying, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. And he says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on earth. Honor thy father and mother. I want to tell you today, this morning, that when he says honor thy mother and thy father, he wasn't talking about your grandparents. He wasn't talking about your foster parent. He was talking about your biology, biological father, the one who, father and mother, the one who brought you into this world, into this world. That's what he's talking about. The reason I can say that is because if you read verse 1 of that, 6 1 he says parents obey your parents for this is right now parents and father and mother are two total different you see the parents are those the one that cares for you parents are the one that cares for you they didn't come out you didn't come out of them they're the one who took care of you that's what parents is job they act as your father and your mother. But on sec, uh, six, two, three, it says, honor thy father. That's your real dad and real mom. I, I know we had, you know, many people have some differences with their parents and stuff, but that's, that's between you and God. But the Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father. And, it's, and, it's, and you know when he says that, that, that's in Ten Commandments. It's like the fifth commandment that God says. And that's why he says, which is the first commandment with promise. It's, there's a promise that attached into that. Okay? And what is that promise? Is that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on earth. Okay? So what is honor means? What is, what is, what is honor really means? Because we, we talk about honor obey, you know, all that stuff. What is that? What does that mean? Okay. Honor means, let me give you an example. To honor somebody, and I want to show the children this. When to honor somebody, well, let me give you, I, I don't know if I had it, if I had it in here, but I guess not. So um, honor means that, that when you, um, I'm going to give you something. When, when you, when your mom and dad tells you to clean your house, okay, and you do it, and that's obey. Obey. You do it. It's obey. But when your mom and dad tells you to clean your house while they're not in the house, 
It says, clean, my, clean the house or something. Clean something. And you didn't obey. That dishonor right there. Honor is something that they don't have to police you. They don't have to watch you. Whatever, you, you do it regardless. You, you, don't, you, you even do it even before they say it. That is honor. That is honor. You, you, you do it even before they tell you. That is honor. And it's a Bible. And it's a Bible. It's this honor thy father and thy mother. You, know? you might have some against with your father. I don't, I don't know. But I didn't say it. It's this honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment. And it says that they may, may us live long on earth. So understand that, okay? You, you, you honor. You do it without watching. You obey. And that's why, that's why it says right here, it says obey them. I mean, uh, I mean honor them, okay? And um, one of the reasons, one of the reasons that this thing, honoring the father and mother, one of, that's one of the reasons why uh, there's a promise with that. But there's a, there's a, there, God links long life to you and me with honoring the Father. What, what is it? What is it? What is it? Why is it so important that God gives long life to people, pr uh, prosperous life to people when you honor your mother and your father? And I'm gonna, again, I'm going to say that is the person that brought you into this world, okay? Why is it? Okay. Family exists. Family exists before church ministry. Family's been here a long, long time ago before even the church started. Okay? That is where God started right there. Family. And the reason that we have church ministry today is because God lost his family. And the main mission of the church is to bring those family back together to God. And that's why we have a church ministry. And that's why it's really important to God, a family. A family, a family is, is the, the representation of, of, of God here on earth. When, when, when you look at the family it should show the love of God in there. It should show the care for each other. You know, it should show the things of, of, of God in there. Okay? Let me give you a verse that proves that. And here's what it says. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. And he says, If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what the son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Okay. But if ye without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, partakers of what? Evil things. Then ye are ba bastards and not sons. And it says, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirit and live? That's, that's powerful. So we not much more rather in subjection to Father and live. To God our Father and live. That is why the recent longevity and old age is attached to honoring the mother and father. It is. It's, 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 it's that simple. You might sit over here and say, oh, please. I know some people that respect their mother and father and die young. I, I know. I know some people. And you are right. You are right. You are absolutely right. There are some people out there that respected their mother and father that died young. Let me ask this, my children in Sunday schools. You shout it out for me. What is the most powerful thing in this world aside from God? What is it again? 
human free will. Remember, that is what God says. A human free will. Yeah. God is, if, if the person decided to do something harsh to, her, to his or her body, God's not going to go over there and say, don't do it. Just because you, you no. That is your free will. You did it yourself. You want to do that to yourself. God's not going to touch it unless you go into subjection unto him. Well. Yes. That's, that, is, that is why. That is why we have this thing today. And that is God has promised, okay? You know, and, and what, about, what about those people that are not mine? I don't have, some people don't have no fathers or mothers. What are you about? Okay, in, in 1, Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 4, it says, If any, okay, if any, okay, widows have children or nephews, let them learn First, to show piety at home and to require their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. So, I mean, I mean, if you look at these scriptures, it doesn't even talk about the Christian people. He says, if any widows, you know, if anybody, any widows that have children, that have nephews, you know, let them learn first so piety. What is, what is a piety? What is that? Piety is a means of showing your faithfulness to your parents. Just showing them, showing them that. And then it says, and it says, if you, if you, have, if you have respect, if you have honor your parents, you're going to show them, show them at home first. That's what it says. Learn, at, learn uh, let them learn first to show at home, Okay. And what it says, to require their parents, to repay. Why? So you can repay the goodness that your parents, your grandparents, your foster parents, your anybody that takes care of you, you can show them, you can repay them with that. And the Bible says that is acceptable and good before God. You don't have to honor your, your if, you, if you don't choose, you don't have to honor your parents, but you must obey them. That's what the Bible says. You must obey them. Honor is for your mother and your father. Obey is for your parents. Okay? So, um, and, and, and I know, I, I know it, this, 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 this verse is, could really, you know, um, just really um, bring us up to, um, we want to do um, show the goodness inside of us in the parents. And then you got to go show them. You got to go pay them. You got to go um, do something with them. And, and in John, in First John chapter 3, verse 8, this is what he warns us with. Okay? This is what he warns us, children, all of us that are children. He warns us with this. In First John chapter 3, verse 18. And it says, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue but in deed and in truth, okay? But in deed and in truth, okay? So don't just say, yeah, Grandma, I'm going to clean my room, and you go on keep playing a game. <sighs> oh, I lost my people. Oh, you know, you just, so you got to obey. You got to obey. That's what the Bible says if you want to go into the subjection to the, um, I just want to ask a question. How how are we doing, children? With your with your, uh, are you guys doing pretty good now? Are you are you are you done? Are you done? I'm trying to get the message fast because you know I know that you guys want to. Are you guys done? Everybody's done, huh? Yeah, are you all done? All right, okay. Now hang on a second. I'll bring you in a minute. Okay. Now 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 how do you show care at home? How do you share that you care at home? Okay. Show your care at home by through your action, okay? Through your action. If, if, if your grandma needs to do something and he wants you to do something, walk the dog or clean, or uh, that's how you do it. And most of all, most of all, that you give of your time them. You go over there and you go, Grandma, I need a hug from you. <laughs> I miss you. You know, give them the time, okay? 
All right. And, and here comes my part two. Part two said time brings lifeline. Time brings lifeline. Can I, can I bring all my, the, the student, the, the, the ones that has a paper, just line up over here, and I wanted to show, I want, let's, let's show everyone what you got on your paper. Let's show everyone what you got on there. Please, come on. Here you go. All right, line up over here. There you go. Come on, right there. Man, I'm excited to go see what they got on there. Come on, go ahead. All right, just line up over here. Line up. I'm excited. Come right here, Chris. Right here, buddy. There you go. All right. Yo, face everyone, all right? Man, this is really cool. I, I wanted to see. It's, isn't this beautiful? Oh, my goodness. This is powerful. All right. Man, I got, uh, what do you got? You got, you got hands on there. You got hands. We got, oh, a, you know, a bird, a bird. Oh, Chris go, drew up flowers. Oh, she, that's a nice, you guys are so artists. Bunny and snake. Oh, my goodness. You got two. You got frog. Oh, my, what is this, giraffe? Giraffe, elephant, and flamingo. Wow, man. You got a kitty cat. I'm, hey, aren't they a good artist? Oh, look at that. My sub right now. and Oh, your sub right now. That's what you want. God. Okay, okay, that's good. And you? Oh, how can I? Okay, that's, is that you? You too? You represent? Okay, that's good. A breeze. A breeze. Oh, wow. Like a holy. Oh, let me see. Let me see Eliana. Eliana, what do you got? Oh, Eliana. You got two eyes in there. And I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, it's beautiful, Ayana. I, you got to real, draw real good. Let me see what you got. Uh, a sun, a jellyfish, and what is, a dolphin. Okay. Hey, what is this? Octopus. All right. Huh? A cheetah? Cheetah? All right. Uh, let me see what you got. Patrick Star, all right. Hey, man, you guys are drawing pretty good. Church. Church, all right. Hey, can we give a hand to our children over there? Thank you. You may be seated, please. You may be seated. Go seated, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. You got one more. Which one you got? I want to be a mom. All right. You must love your mom. Woohoo! Oh, my goodness. Hey, uh, I, I, I'm really enjoying my, my message here, my, my, uh, my, the message for, uh, for, for the, uh, I, this, this children, it just really blows my mind today. I mean, I hope, I hope you too. I mean, they, they put a lot of work on those things. Uh, you kind of see, you kind of see what, what's going on in children's class right now. <laughs> but so, um, and, and the reason, here's the thing. The part two is, is time brings lifeline. And, and then I, I, I specifically brought those children to do this because, children, I want to tell you a story real quick. There's a story. There's a reason why I, I, I had you draw it. There's a story about a teacher. There's a story about a teacher. And this teacher did something what I asked you to do. This teacher asked the student to draw something if God would want, you know, draw something if God didn't create you who you are. And... God would, you know, draw, the children would draw something, uh, what they want God to create. And, and then a, a lot of expectation, actually, kind of like what you saw today. Uh, uh, the, the expectation that's in the room is like Marvel Comics, you know, uh, Superman, um, the, their favorite athletes. And those are the, the, um, that's, those are the, uh, the expectation. So, so what happened is... Uh, they have to write a reason why, why they chose that. And so they, the mom brought the projects at home, and she started reading it. She started reading like what you do today. She started reading it, and, and she was like, she was like laughing, and, and, and then it's like, wow, this is beautiful, you know, because like you said, they were drawing Superman or Batman or kind of like a cartoon characters that he drew, that, uh, Daniel drew. Uh, that was until he got to that one kid that's one kid and when he when she saw this one kid and she started crying she started crying she's crying really hard 
and she saw what the kid drew. And her husband was coming into the, you know, to the room, and she saw, he saw her, he saw his wife crying. I said, what's, what's wrong, honey? Oh, I, I had this project, and I asked these kids, you know, to, to draw this project, and everything else is going until I got to this one. And, and she just started crying. Can everybody guess what she, just dress what she drew. What, what do you think she drew, or he drew? Jesus, okay, that's good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a clue real quick what the kid draw. What do you think the kid draw? Huh? It's a television. Yeah. Yes. A TV, right? Yeah. yeah. The kid drew a TV. Drew a TV with the antenna and everything. And you know why the kid drew? He explained. He explained why the kid drew. And this is why the, the, the teacher started crying. The kid drew and, and he said, he says, I want God to make me a television so that my, my family in the living room, when they come together, they can watch me and look at me and watch me so that they can all be in front of me and watch me. And then sometimes when my dad comes home, when, she come, when he comes home from work and he's tired and he's all stressed out, I want him to sit down and watch me and sit me and look at me and just watch me. And, and, and man, my mom, when, when, she, when, when she didn't have anything to do and she was looking for to do, and she would just sit down and watch me and look at me and just watch me. And, and my brothers and my sisters would fight the opportunity to, to, to come before me and just watch me. And, that's, and, 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 and the husband responded and he says, but that is a horrible parent. What, what's, what's wrong with those parents? Yeah. And, and, and you know what the mom says? You know, you know why I was crying? That, that is our son. That is our son. That is our son. That did that. And, and, and church, and, and the reason I tell you this, this story today, because it's not just children that are experiencing this. We have the aged people around us, elderly people, that constantly being physically neglected and physically or spiritually abandoned. That is what is happening in our community. Children, yeah, because, you know, eventually, eventually, children, uh, when we get older, we become like a little child again, eventually. And we would need help from whoever can help us with. And that is what's happening this day. And, and, and we would just be all of smartphones and all of us, you know, because we are so focused on ourselves, we just... Never mind forgetting. We just focus on our, our dealing with ourselves and with all the uh, chaos in our lives. And we forget about those things, you know. And, or, you know, we go sit down on our phone and just spend so much time on our phone. We spend so much time on our TV. Spend so much time with our cars. Spend so much time in school and our jobs and, and playing the game system. And don't worry about anything. Yeah, and, and, and truthfully and honestly, church, if we are doing this to our parents that we see, how much more we're doing it to God? How much more are we doing this to God? Yes, and, and, and I'm closing pretty soon, and, I, and I, I'm trying not to. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 10, verse, 11, verse 7 to 10. And, it, and here's what he says. Truly the light is sweet. And a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Okay. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. And verse 9 says, rejoice, O young man. In thy youth, 
And let thy heart cheer thee in thy days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But thou, but know thou that for all these good, but all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. What he says, therefore remove sorrows from thy hearts and put away all evil things from evil from thy flesh. For thy for childhood and youth are vanity. Okay? Childhood and youth. It's not saying your childhood and your youth is vanity. It was saying, it was just saying that, you know, being strong and young in 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 it's all vanity. That's what the that's what the Bible is saying. It's not saying that you are vanity. It's saying that being young and strong the vanity. Because all comes goes into so what are you, what are we influencing ourselves with today when we go out in school? Who are who are we influencing? Are we are we hearing our parents? Are we hearing our parents or are we hearing what's outside of our family? Are we hearing what the church family is leading us to? Or are we just kind of blowing everything in our, in, our, in our head? Okay? Now, success is the, the big thing. The success is the, is the real thing. And it says success is the byproduct of obeying the law. I don't know. I hope you believe that. I hope you believe that with all your heart. Success is the byproduct of obeying the law. And I'm going to give you scriptures over that. And it says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. And it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do to all that is in written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I, I hope it gets any clearer than that, what, what I just read. If you want to be success, successful in God, you, you, you have to throw all those things away that comes in between you and your family. Okay? You, you, in the end, God is the one that matters. In the end, God is the one who can say, a good and thy faithful servant enter into the joy. Okay? In the end, Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Jesus is the one that died on the cross for us. And he owes, he, we owe him everything. We owe him everything. And, and today, church, let us remind ourselves what Jesus did because we're about to take a communion. Um,